hi this is she's making something and i saw these ghost lights on pinterest and youtube and i thought they were ridiculously cute for halloween so i went and picked up some supplies and it's time to make some for myself so the items that i am using i picked most of them up from the dollar store so i started with a white round tablecloth a styrofoam block a clear plastic bowl i also got the christmas lights from the dollar store I have some black felt that I already had at home, and then of course the tomato cage which forms our main structure, which is currently not being used to grow tomatoes because the tomato growing season's over, so it's just lying around not being used. If you had Christmas lights, then you could use those instead of buying some, but of course I got mine for cheap from the dollar store. The first thing I'm going to do is assemble the round head of the ghost by using the styrofoam block and the clear plastic bowl and some hot glue. I've seen other versions of this on Pinterest where they just use a styrofoam ball for the head and then just stick that on. I saw another one where they took the cheap plastic orange trick-or-treating pumpkin and spray painted it white and then used that. And both of those work just fine in their videos. The styrofoam balls are a little expensive. This bowl was just a dollar from the dollar store. And then the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin worked really well, except I didn't want to mess with spray paint. And it was also kind of wobbly on top of the tomato cage, so that's where the styrofoam block comes in. Which, unfortunately for me, the styrofoam block didn't fit exactly in the bowl. But styrofoam's a little squishy, and I can kind of smush it into place, and it'll kind of form around the bowl. So I really don't want this to be insecure and blow away in the wind, because it is going to be outside. So. I'm adding huge, generous dollops of hot glue in these corners, and then I just shove it in place and really try to stick it in there nice and good, but it wasn't quite secure enough for me. I mean, the hot glue stuck pretty well, but I'm just being extra cautious about it. So I'm gonna place a little more hot glue around these corners just because I want to. And then once it's in there pretty nice and secure, and I know it's not just gonna fall off or blow away, and it's time to stick it on the tomato cage. So the tomato cage is upside down. The little pokey ends that normally go in the soil are sticking straight up in the air. And I'm gonna take those little ends and shove them right in the styrofoam block, trying to keep them as even and as centered as I can. I was kind of trying to get my bowl tilted just a little bit so I can kind of get a little more volume at the front of the ghost. So like with almost all my supplies, I got the Christmas lights from the dollar store as well. I did pick up two boxes of these 20 count mini lights, clear, because after reading the description it says it's five feet in length, but the lit length is only three feet. So there's only three feet of lights and that wasn't gonna be enough for me, so I grabbed two boxes. I know a lot of people have Christmas lights just sitting around in boxes, not being used on Halloween. I only spent $2 for Christmas lights, but reusing something you already have is even better. Now this is where I ran into my first real problem with these lights, is after testing that they worked, which is good, I don't want to be jipped by the dollar store, I realized that there's only a plug on one end of the strand of lights, which kind of foiled my plan of stringing the two strands together and creating one longer strand of lights. So I had to do some quick thinking, rework my plan a little bit on how I was going to attach these lights inside the ghost. So I tried a different ways of attaching this end to the tomato cage. First I tried sticking one light through the rest of the strand and creating kind of a knot, but that wasn't really secure enough. And then I saw the hot glue gun sitting on the floor. So I tried a little bit of hot glue, which is how I stick my Christmas lights to the bricks outside my house, by the way, but that's a whole other story. And then later, um, after wrapping the lights around, I remembered the little twist ties that came with the Christmas lights, and those were a much better solution than hot glue for sticking the lights to the cage. So with two strands of lights that are harder to connect to each other, probably would have been easier to have them going up and down the cage in vertical lines. But I knew I wanted them to go around the cage in circles because I thought it'd give a more even distribution of light inside the ghost. So now the lights are on, they're attached, and they're working. They're not very pretty, but that's okay because we're gonna cover the whole thing up with the white tablecloth. Which, as I mentioned earlier, I just picked up from the Dollar Tree. 
You can use sheets or white fabric or other thicker tablecloths, but I was going for the budget option, <laughs> which I completely forgot that the white plastic tablecloths from the dollar store are actually very see-through, which worked mostly fine for my ghost because I wanted the light to shine through pretty well, but my fluted clear plastic bowl has that shape and that definition to it, which became really easy to see when the lights were turned on. But that's okay. I love my little ghost anyway. So after finding the center of the tablecloth, I try to stick that on the top. And then it's just very carefully and gently unfolding the tablecloth and arranging it around the tomato cage so that there weren't any major wrinkles or gaps and it was just kind of evenly flowing down the sides. So after adjusting and readjusting, I was finally happy with the way the tablecloth was arranged. And it was time for the last piece of the ghost, which is the cute little ghost face. So I cut mine out of black felt. I did consider using black trash bags for an even more budget friendly option, but I had felt, so that didn't cost me anything either. I folded my felt in half when I was cutting out the eyes to make sure I'd get two eyes that were exactly the same. And for one ghost, I cut out kind of a bean shape for the eyes and the other ghosts are kind of more like sixes. I was going for cartoony, cute little ghost face so I didn't scare my kids when they were out playing in the front yard. And for the mouth, they were very long, stretchy ovals. They didn't have to be exactly the right shape. They could be a little wonky because the ghost's mouth is supposed to be open and kind of that cartoony singing look. So once the face was all cut out, time to attach it to the tablecloth and I used hot glue I wanted to be extra careful not to melt a hole in the plastic tablecloth or burn my fingers trying to stick it on there so I just gently placed it and then very gently rubbed it all over until I knew it was attached to the tablecloth. It didn't need a lot of pressure, just very gently pressure and let that hot glue do its work. So I know I said the face was the last part, but I lied. Because my tablecloth doesn't touch the ground, I decided to take some scissors and cut up the tablecloth just the edge of it into little strips to give the bottom of my ghost that raggedy, wispy, classic floating ghost look. And there are my two ghosts, one for each side of my door. I really liked how simple and easy this was, not to mention budget friendly. I mean, each ghost only cost me about $5 worth of supplies from the dollar store because I already had the tomato cages. And I really like them. I think they're adorable. If you plan on making some, go ahead and let me know. Maybe we can have a little ghost party. Happy Halloween. Thanks for watching.